Hello and welcome to another Writerly Wittering. Today I have a book that's not a recent one. In fact, I got this probably about 10 years ago. It was originally published in 1982 and this was published by Quirkus in 2007. So yeah, it's 12 years old. So this is a five minute review of Thomas Perry's The Butcher's Boy. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, this is one of those books that I was given when I was away on a book tour, a signing trip, and you used to get given books when you went on these signing trips. You'd go to something like the Bouchercon convention in the States and they'd give you a massive carrier bag full of books. There were so many books that quite often, when I got home, I hadn't managed to read them all yet, and so they'd go into a to-be-read pile. And that was next to the to be read pile that was books that were sent to me for review. So quite often they never got read. This didn't. And I'm glad because I've now found time to read it. So The Butcher's Boy, what's it about? The Butcher's Boy is basically an assassin who's been given a couple of killings to commit. Now, this book is really quite fascinating because you never know the guy's name at any point. So all the way you're going through this story looking at the crimes and the investigations from two points of view. One is the point of view of someone who you never know the name of and the other one is Elizabeth Waring who is an operative within the Justice Department not the FBI and her job is to investigate, research, minor events. She is not an agent who is supposed to go out guns blazing and so on. She's a researcher. So every weekend, all of the slightly suspicious deaths that happened the week before land on her desk. And it's her job to sift through them and see if there's anything that could be slightly suspicious, such as potentially something that was committed by a paid assassin, a contract killer. And she doesn't find any this weekend. There's a guy who's been shot. There's a woman who's been shot by her lover. It's obvious sort of stuff. And one bloke who was carrying a lot of fertilizer in his pickup truck and it blew up. And she checks up. This was written in 1982, rather before car bombs and so on in, in Northern Ireland. And she discovers that fertilizer can be quite explosive. And she does a little bit of digging, checks up, and she's told, yes, it can be quite explosive. And she says, well, there's nothing particularly suspicious here then. And the guy she's talking to, who happens to be in the FBI, says, well, unless you found blasting caps or something, because you couldn't set a fertiliser off as a bomb unless you had some sort of device to set it off. And so she gets a bit interested and she goes to investigate this killing. But there's nothing to suggest any sort of mob connections or anything. So she's not particularly inspired by this possible murder. And then somebody else dies, a senator, and that's much more serious because he's a much more important person. So she and her FBI colleague go over to get as much information as they can about this death. And they discover that he was actually murdered. And it's a bit difficult to see how. And then they discovered that his dentures were sitting in a, a glass which had not only water, but some poison in it as well. Makes it interesting. So, in brief, did I like this book? Too right I like this book. Really well written. It's actually got uh, Relentless, A Rare Accomplishment by Michael Connolly. And Michael Connolly must have li liked it because he actually wrote an introduction to it as well. I don't know how I didn't see that when I first picked up this book. But it is gripping, it is really enthralling, the writing is very, very good. And I have to admit it works as a period piece now because you see investigators going to the nearest payphones using their company payphone credit card and all of these things from the 1980s that I'd forgotten about. Is it worth reading? Very definitely. What do I really like about it? The writing's very, very good. I like the fact it's just got the two perspectives, the investigator and the criminal. It is a taut political thriller as well as being a good crime book. 
it works really pretty much on every level. I also liked the actual crime that is trying to be covered up by the murders, which is one of those things. Um, so that's all very good. Is there anything I don't like about it? I would have liked it to have been in a smaller format so it would have picked, fitted in my pocket more easily when I was out walking the dogs. That's not a big negative, is it? No. So, as far as I'm concerned, if you see this, really well worth a read. Good fun, well written, excellent book. If you liked that, don't forget to go down to the bottom and there's a Patreon link and I am putting up lots of Patreon stuff today, so go down and have a look at that. Actually, not today, it's going to go up tomorrow, but some of it will go up today. But anyway, go and have a look if you want to. It's down there. Um, if you want to add a comment, if you've read any other books by Thomas Perry, please add that in the comment section down the bottom and then hit subscribe, hit the bell button if you want to find out when a new video is coming out, share it, all those good things. And in the meantime, thanks a lot for watching and I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye bye.